A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Verbum Domini. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. 
So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what you need for the feast, or go or, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer, while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. Verbum Domini When I was young, uh, very often I'd gather with my brother and a few friends, and we'd watch uh, kung fu theater. Uh, you know, the, 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 the kung fu movies that were made, I don't know, sometime in the 60s or 70s, and, and usually they, had a, uh, they were in some Asian language and they had English over them, and then you would, you know, see the, after they would speak English, their lips would still be moving, and those kinds of movies, those are the ones I'm talking about. And in one of these, uh, these films, um, one of the, the, the men would say, you have to suffer before you succeed. And so us as, as youngsters, we, anytime one of us would suffer, we would say that to each other, whether we had a bruise or broken heart or whatever it was, we would say that you have to suffer before you succeed. And you know, there is some truth to that little statement. There's a whole lot of truth. You have to suffer before you succeed. I mean, that's probably true of anything that we, we do or, or try to accomplish. There's a little bit of hard work. There's a little toil, uh, some tenacity involved in, in the things we, we try to attain or accomplish. But, you know, we could also say, and especially in the Christian life, that there is success in the suffering. And this is what the readings today remind us of. First of all, in the, uh, here in the first reading from Isaiah, we hear about the suffering servant. And the suffering servant who is suffering for God and for us, this is Jesus the Lord, this is a prophecy, but yet God mentions the word glory in this sufferings. And then Jesus, today in this reading where he is at the Last Supper with the disciples, he says that God will glorify me now. He will do it at once. And this is right before he's about to enter his passion and suffering. This is right at the Last Supper. He says, God will glorify me at once. Now, we, we of course, uh, in the world, it, success is measured by how much we have, who our friends are, um, what we own, uh, our accomplishments. You know, these are good things. But in the Christian life, it's, it's deeper because it's about growing in Jesus Christ and excelling in his grace. You know, but, but in, for, in, in the most 
oh, in, in, in the times of our suffering is when we need the grace of Jesus Christ the most. You know, and it's at this time of suffering when we are so weak that we need to depend on the grace of Jesus Christ to help us live, to help us to love. And, you know, in, in, in our trials, in our sufferings, you know, it, it's very difficult to, to think that, that we're not a failure, that we haven't done something wrong, that in the midst of a trial where everything seems to be going wrong, nothing goes right for us, we see ourselves as often abandoned, that God is not with me, that, that I'm alone, that everybody is against me. You know, and, and this, when, when we have these experiences or these tribulations, it does not feel like we are succeeding. In fact, it's the, it feels, it, it can, we can feel the opposite way, that we are failing. But let's look deeper into the suffering servant. And here uh, in the first reading from Isaiah, it says right here, it says, Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, for though I thought I had toiled in vain. You know, we, when we look at, at the sufferings of Jesus, and then we see his death on the cross, in the eyes of the world, in the way success is measured in the world, he's a failure. We, we see him rejected. We see him persecuted. We see him spitted upon. We see him tortured. It looks like he's lost. And then he's murdered. He dies. What, what, what's in that there? But yet we have to look again a little deeper because we see what, what's happening during these uh, moments of pain and suffering. And we look to the way of the cross and it's in the way of the cross that we see great love. We see Jesus loving us we see the world experiencing a love that it has never known before. Because though the world and the evil is crushing him and everything seems to be against him, everything is going wrong, he still loves. He still forgives. He's still, he's, he's still full of goodness. You see how he, you see the success in this. This is the glory of God, the very love and goodness of Jesus Christ. This is glory right here. And this is why, why Paul tells us, St. Paul says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is Christ, the power of God. It is our power right there. Because it's, it's at that time when we are at our weakness, but it's at this time when we can be at our strongest. Again, because of the grace of Jesus Christ flowing in and through us. This is victory right here. A, a few weeks ago, we, we witnessed out in the Middle East uh, uh, 21 men who were who are martyred right there. Again, in the, in the eyes of the world, that may seem a failure. But, in the, but, but for amongst us Christians, amongst, amongst us Catholics, this is success. See, they, they, they're showing that they ran the race well and that they received the imperishable crown, the crown of martyrdom. You know, and, and that they were, you know, for, in order for, for one to, to be a martyred, he needs to have the grace of Jesus Christ because it's only by that grace can, that, that somebody could die for him. So imagine the communion, the union they had with Jesus Christ at those moments, the love that they experienced. Though they were scared, though they, they were probably frightened at, at, at the, the suffering that was going to befall them, but yet, yet God was giving them his, them his grace. And they died for love of Jesus Christ. And what a witness that is to us. What an inspiration that is, and a testimony of the grace of Jesus Christ to lay down our life for love of him. And so, my, my brothers and sisters, though, you know, wherever we, we are at this time in our spiritual lives, 
you know, wherever um, life has us right now. I mean, perhaps some of us are, are, could be in the nursing home or in the prison, you know, um, uh, maybe alone at, at home, or whatever it is. Maybe we're suffering great persecutions right now. You know, and this is especially difficult in, amongst our family members, amongst our, our friends that maybe they reject us because we, we love Jesus Christ. You know, they do harm to us. They say mean things to us. They gossip behind our back. You know, they, 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 they spread slander about us because we're following Christ the Lord. And, and this, this can give us a sense of defeat. You know, maybe, maybe we're, if we're alone in the nursing home or in prison, nobody visits us. He says, well, I'm abandoned by God. No, we're not. We are never abandoned by God. This, these times of sufferings, these times of trials are opportunities, are really opportunities for success in the Christian life because it's at this time when we need to rely on the grace of Jesus Christ the most. We remember St. Paul who says that, uh, you know, uh, he, had a, he had a thorn in his flesh and he says, uh, or maybe that was a, an analogy that, you know, scholars say different things, but he says that, Lord, take this thorn out of my flesh. You know, take it, please. And Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul, a few, a few not long after, he says, well then, you know, I rather glory in my infirmities, in my distresses, in my persecutions for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, and this is what God gives to us. You know, and sometimes, well, maybe we're in, in, the, in, in, the, in the trials and the sufferings and, and we, we fail. You know, we, we, we fall short. We just get, we, you know, we just lose it. But yet this too, God can turn around for good because it's there that we, we, we are humbled. It's there where, where, we are, where we learn patience with ourselves because it's there where we learn that we need God. We need to be dependent on him. So he always turns things around for the good and for his glory. Again, the words of St. Paul, he says that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. We think about, of course, it's the glory when we reach, when we reach heaven and when we have the beatific vision, but the glory now. Remember, Jesus says, now. God will glorify me now in his most trying hour, in the hour of suffering and pain. God will glorify me now, and so he will glorify us because we receive an inheritance from him. The grace is from the sacraments, from our baptism, that bring us into the mysteries of Jesus Christ. So he will glorify us in the same way if we are open to it, if we are open to, ex to receive this love. He says, Lord, give it to me. And, and when we are in these moments of trials and, and pain, then we look to Jesus Christ, and this is at this time when we unite ourselves to him. Okay, he's, he was suffered, he suffered, he was abandoned, he was rejected, he suffered, he, he had pain, he hurt, you know. He, 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 had, he had a broken heart too, okay. And then so we look to him and says, Lord, now you're giving me a share in your life. You've given me your sufferings, your trials, now give me the love you had during these trials. Bring your glory. Increase your grace at this time. And he will. See, he will do it. Remember, he's always faithful. Even though we're not faithful, he is faithful. And, and though like we, we're, we're suffering, we're carrying the cross, and though we, we, we don't feel like it, but God is doing a work. You know, it's, it's just one day at a time. He's doing something. Though we, we may not see it, we are being a witness during these times of trials when we rely and depend on the grace of Jesus Christ. People are watching. They're looking and says, look it, even though that person is suffering, even though they have pain, even though we're persecuted and rejected them, they are not broken. Why aren't they broken? Because of the grace that is within them. See? And many of us often live this and don't even realize it. The grace that, that is within us is so powerful, so amazing. God can do great things. And, and so, so we trust. It, it's about now trusting him. And in trusting him, we, we, we leave ourselves open to, to this, this grace of his. 
knowing that, 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 God, that, that God will always provide in our suffering, and he'll always bring about good through it. He will, he will always bring about his glory through it. So, so let's, let's trust in this, in this word of the Lord, that, that, that he will bring about his glory in my sufferings. And this is, this is what helps us to persevere, is, is, is doing all things for love of Jesus Christ, having Jesus Christ in our minds and in our hearts. One thing here it says in Isaiah 2, it says, he says that, that I will be like a sharp two-edged sword, and that's what we saw in, 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 in the life and the sufferings and passion of Jesus, because he was living the word. And so may God, may God make us this sharp two-edged sword so that we may be his word in our times of trial, in our times of suffering. God bless you all.